grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. On this Quinquagesima Sunday, what I really want you to hear is what our Lord has done for you. Actually, it's what He's done for all of us. Let us pray. These are your words, Holy Father. Sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Well, as you know, our Lord spoke in parables so that those without faith could not understand. He even said, to the rest, referring to those who don't believe, they get parables. That seeing, they may not see. And hearing, they may not understand. But the seeing that the Lord describes is not a seeing that is done with the eyes. Rather, it is a seeing that is done with the ears. And what that means is, unbelieving men without working eye, or excuse me, with working eyes, still cannot see. And so, in the account of the blind man, blind Bartimaeus, we meet a man whose eyes no longer work, but he is one who can truly see. And we meet a group of men whose eyes, they work perfectly. They work just fine. But they are truly blind. Our Lord teaches the twelve that He is going to Jerusalem. There the prophecies of old will be fulfilled. That, of course, that He's going to be delivered over to the Gentiles, i.e. the Romans. He's going to be mocked. He's going to be insulted. He's going to be spit upon. And there He is going to be scourged. And then He is going to be killed. Yet, on the third day, He will rise again. Our Lord's words are very clear. He speaks plainly when he tells them what is about to happen. But they don't understand. It says that it's hidden from them. Which is why they're surprised and they're confused when they arrive at Passion Week and the events therein. Even as they occur, just as our Lord said they would. For as you know, when he is arrested, what do they do? They flee. The disciples fail to confess Jesus at those painful hours, even denying that they know him. They mourn and they tremble in fear as he lays in the tombs. They lock themselves away for fear of retaliation by the Jews and terror of the Jews. And then, of course, when he takes up his life again, they're shocked. They don't even recognize him, some of which even demand proof. Proof that it's truly him. And then when he meets them on that Galilean mountain before his ascension, this is after his resurrection, this is after all of the miracles, after his clear teaching, some still doubt. They had eyes, but they couldn't see. They had ears, but they could not understand. And so to those who traveled with St. Luke records that as they passed by on the road, a blind man cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is a remarkable confession. This man's words are a public confession of saving faith. He confessed with his mouth what he believed in his heart, calling Jesus the son of David. David, which is why we have the Old Testament lesson that we do today. Son of David is an ancient messianic title. David's son, the descendant of David, the seed of David. This is the new and better Solomon. This is the new and better Moses. 
This is the long-awaited Savior that is prophesied as early as Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15, the Lord dealing with the serpent, with the land, with Adam and Eve, promises a Messiah. It's called the Proto-Euangelion, the first gospel. Use that to impress your friends. The Proto-Euangelion. This man believed the Proto-Euangelion. He believed what the prophet said about Jesus. Because this is the Messiah who would crush the devil's head and the blind man, he knows it to be true. You see, he believes. And he who believes in his heart and confesses with his mouth shall be saved. But what's wild is the sighted men who travel with the Lord, they tried to silence the blind man. Beloved, faith never silences a right confession. The blind man cries out, but the sighted men warn him to be quiet. Faith never does that. Thus the men whose eyes function fine, they are proven to be completely blind. You know, speaking of that, every transgression, it really is for us a work of blindness. Sin is the inability or the unwillingness on our part to see the true God. Fallen men, they close their eyes to God so that they might see what their fallen flesh wants to see and lusts after. I mean, just consider your words or your actions or your thoughts just this week. By them, have you confessed blindness or have you confessed true sight? Sin loves darkness, but God is light and His light brings transgression into sight. Again, how clear has your confession been have you tried to fit in into a fallen world this week? Have you been like the blind man, confessing clearly that regardless of the rebuke of those around you, Christ is indeed your Savior? Or have you been at times too embarrassed? Have you been more like the men traveling with the Lord who desired to be seen with Christ, but yet who wanted to silence the truth? Holy Scripture has a biting word for such as that. It's hypocrite. But thanks be to God, faith always overcomes unbelief. The faith of the seeing blind man was greater than the unbelief of the blind seeing men. They tried to silence him, but he cried out all the more cried out in darkness because by faith he had seen the light of the world. He confessed Jesus as the Messiah and he prayed for mercy, the mercy of God. He prayed as that tax collector prayed. You remember him? When he stood humbled outside the temple and he, and he beat his breast, mia culpa, mia culpa, mia maxi culpa. He said what? God be merciful to me, a sinner. The seeing blind man prayed the prayer of faith, Kyrie eleison, which is, Lord, have mercy. He saw clearly. And that prayer of faith, that public confession that Christ is indeed the Savior, that clear proclamation in Him that there is forgiveness of sins, beloved, that is your prayer this very day as well. Because the Holy Liturgy places that prayer in your mouth as you already sung this morning. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Confessing those words in faith, the forgiveness and the healing that He alone can give. Beloved, that's made yours. For with the man who truly saw, you see Christ as your Savior. You see Him as your Redeemer, the one who gave His life for the remission of all of your sins. You confess that you believe that Jesus went to Jerusalem, that Jesus was mocked, He was insulted, He was spit upon. 
You confess that He is your Lord, that He is the Son of God, that He is the Son of David, God incarnate, and that He was scourged and He was killed. He who alone confessed rightly had His cry silenced upon the cross. He who saw perfectly was then blinded by the darkness of death. And you confess as well that He rose again on the third day and that He ascended into heaven. By faith you confess that He will come again, as we just said, to judge the quick and the dead, and you confess that He does all of this for you. Pro nobis. He does it for you. By faith you make Christ your own, and your sins are forgiven, and you are declared righteous in the sight of God the Father, by grace through faith in God the Son, David's Son, and David's Lord. When this man was healed, the blind who can now see, he didn't go at once to look at all the things that he had missed in his life, all the things that he had never seen or ceased to see. He didn't turn around and go home to see the house that before he had only felt. He didn't go to his parents. He didn't go to his siblings, his wife, to see the faces that he had only known before by, by touch. No, once he received his sight, he turned his back on the world and he followed Jesus. Proof that he truly saw. He believed, he glorified God, and he followed Christ because that's what faith does. See, faith rejoices in a right confession of Christ. I mean, you know this to be true. All the things that you hear on the television or on the radio especially these commentators at times, sometimes they make me want to pull what's left of my hair out because it is a wrong confession of Christ. But every so often a blind squirrel will find a nut, right? A broken clock is right twice a day and there will be somebody who will make a right confession of Christ and I want to pull my car over and get up and jump up and down because that's what faith does. Faith rejoices in a right confession of Christ. Faith joys in hearing Christ publicly confessed. Faith hungers for the Word of God. Faith studies the Scriptures. Faith confesses clearly. Faith cries out. And this is why there's such joy for our study of the Lutheran Confessions, the Book of Concord, which are a proper exposition of the Holy Scriptures. That's what faith hungers for. It's what faith rejoices in. These are the things that faith feeds upon and that which makes faith grow. Here are the very things that faith hungers for are freely given. Christ is here so that where faith desires to be, here the Spirit of God works through water and works through word to give life to dead men, to bring blind men the true sight. Sure, earthly eyes see nothing but water but faith sees rebirth from above. Earthly eyes see nothing but bread and wine over there, but it's the eyes of faith that know that it's the body and blood of Christ. Here is Christ for you. And so here your faith desires to be. For here you receive true healing. You believe, you eat, you drink, and it is for you that the Lord says, not your faith has healed you, but your faith has saved you. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Rise for the offering.